Hi, my name is Lexi Jong and welcome to my channel. Today I have an exciting new product and that is the new Sisley Phytopudra Compact Powder. Right now, this is available at Sisley and at Harrods, but I have not seen it anywhere else yet. It will be coming to other retailers shortly. I purchased shade one, Rosie, and this powder comes in four shades. Three of them are translucent. There's Rosie, there's Natural, and Sandy, I believe is the third one. And then the fourth shade is a bronze shade. This compact retails for 112 US dollars. And when you purchase it, it does, you know, it comes in this soft pink box and it has a red velour pouch. And notice it does have an elastic here so you can kind of tuck it in. It makes it a little bit more secure if you're carrying it in a bag. The compact itself comes with the traditional Sisley zebra print and it does have a push button here. It's lightweight, this is plastic, and you have a mirror in the lid and it comes with a little puff and you can see that it is a very thin puff and this is like a faux leather material on the back. So here's the compact. I've been using this for about a week and I have tried it out in, with a variety of application methods. So I'm gonna go through those with my thoughts. First, let's finish going over the product. According to Sisley, this is an ultra sensorial powder infused with three plant-based butters for moisturized skin with incomparable softness and comfort. It mattifies, evens out, and smooths the complexion, providing a velvety and luminous finish suitable for all skin types. It is made in Italy and it has 0.42 ounces or 12 grams. Just in case you're wondering, this is the back of the product. A little bit more about the powder from Sisley. It's ultra soft and creamy, blends instantly into the skin for a soothing sensation and a velvety feel. No powdery finish, imperceptible on the skin. And it has cocoa, mango, and I'm not sure how to say this, kupuaku butters, as well, or kupuasu butters maybe, as well as hibiscus flower extract, and that's for comfort and hydration. It's exceptionally smoothing, blurs, wrinkles, and fine lines while adhering perfectly to the skin for improved hold. And the coverage is buildable for a radiant, perfectly even, and beautified complexion to suit your mood. It mentions that the bronze tone is to add glow and contour, so that one might have a little bit more luminosity than the three transparent shades. I have not tried that one. Application recommendations from Sisley are to use this powder with their powder brush for light coverage and a second skin finish. And if you would like more intense coverage, they recommend using the included puff, particularly in the T-zone and then you just swipe it outwards. So you've got more powder concentrated in the center of your face where you produce more oil. Another product that I have in my collection is the Sisley Phytopudra Libra powder in number three, Rose Orient. And this is the loose powder and it comes with a mirror at the top and then you have this like sifter thing. It also comes with a puff. I just took that out. And after I go through my thoughts on the pressed powder and how I like to use it best. We're going to take a look at a comparison between the loose powder, which has been out quite a while, and the pressed powder. If you are interested in my first impressions on this pressed powder, I did put them in the get ready with me video from last week, and I will link that above and down below in the description box. Also, I will have ingredients for this product down below in the description box. When I first used this product under my eyes, I used my fingers to tap the powder underneath, which is something I like to do a lot with the powders because often it, I can get it exactly where I want it in the lines without getting an accumulation of product. I can kind of tap out any excess. However, that backfired with this product and it ends up looking a little powdery, a little cakey with that. So I would not recommend using fingers with the pressed powder under your eyes. Now under the eyes, I have tried the included puff and I have also tried using a brush, and my favorite application method is with a brush. In particular, I like to use this Sonia G Mini Cheek Brush because it still is a pretty fluffy brush. I have also tried using something more like this. This is the Chikahodu 
F05, which is technically an eyeshadow brush, but I use this for powder under my eyes quite often. But you can see that this brush is going to have a lot less give than a fluffier brush. And this doesn't work as well with the powder as the Mini Cheek from Sonia G. Because of its fluffiness, I'm able to get just a really light coating exactly where I want it. It doesn't really accumulate. Whereas this applies just a little bit too much product and if I'm not careful, it can look a little powdery. So I would recommend a fluffier brush if you are applying it under the eyes. Now I do have the powder under my eyes today. I have worn it that way quite frequently recently and I think it works well under the eyes. I haven't had any issues. However, it is not my favorite powder to use under the eyes. If I'm not careful, it can look a bit powdery or crepey and you know, it's just, it's not really easy to correct that once you have a little bit too much on. It, it doesn't really kind of dissipate. So personally, this powder is not my preference for under the eye, but it does work well under there and it does add a little bit of blurring as well. I have used this powder for both setting and finishing powder and honestly, I like it both ways. It really depends what look I'm going for. If I'm looking for a mattified yet softly luminous look on my skin, it makes a really great finishing powder. I have it on actually a setting and finishing powder today and you can see that even though my skin has is mattified, there's still a little bit of a glow, a little bit of luminosity that peeks through. So this side of my face has the pressed powder on it and I really like that finish and I think it works well during the summer. Another thing that Cicely recommends with this powder is actually using it just after skincare, no makeup. It helps even out your skin that way, adds kind of a mattified look to it, but it doesn't really provide any color. It does blur a little bit, so you know it does kind of help with any complexion issues, but obviously you're not gonna have any major coverage or anything. Let's take a look at the shade Rosy, and although it is called Rosy, it's not super pink. It's actually very natural. It's got just the slightest blush pink look to it. Here's the powder on my finger, and I don't think you're really gonna be able to see it because it really is pretty translucent. I have tried applying a lot of powder to my face, and I really don't pick up any tint from it. Obviously, applying a lot of powder, you can get that like powdery look to your face after a while, but I'm not getting any sort of pink addition to my skin, which I think is really nice and not always true with some of these translucent blurring powders. As for the claims that Cicely has made with these powders, I definitely think that it is efficient at blurring my skin. I actually really like it a lot for a blurring powder. Prior to now, my favorite blurring powder has been this Chantecai Perfect Blur Finishing Powder, and I really love this powder. However, it does have a peachy tint to it, and if I am not careful, I can get too much of this powder on my, my skin, and then I get kind of like a, a peachy look to my skin. Color-wise, I prefer the Sicily. The effectiveness between this and the Chantecai for blurring is pretty similar. So if you're happy with that color, you don't need this one for blurring. However, the texture of the powders is a little different. The texture of this powder compared with the Chantecai Perfect Blur, this one is a little bit creamier to, to the touch. So they are both a pretty firm pressed powder, but this one is a little bit softer. And you can see that as I've been using this, I don't have any kick up or anything in the pan. There's no dust that gets produced. It is just a really nice product. Let's take a look at the loose powder in number three, Rose Orient. And according to Cicely, this powder is fine and light as a veil, creates the perfect halo, giving incomparable radiance and sets makeup. This powder for application, it's recommended to use a powder puff with, with light tapping over the face and then you use a brush to kind of brush away any excess or if you want even lighter coverage, just use the brush. You can use this before or after foundation or just on skin after your skincare. Claims for this product are to unify and mattify the complexion, smoothing and visually refining the skin texture. 
and it gives a second skin for a perfectly natural result and imperceptible makeup. I have been using this powder for, I don't know, a couple months maybe, and I really like this powder. Personally, I prefer to use this powder as a setting powder. I've used it as setting and finishing. I actually have it on as setting and finishing powder on this side of my face right now, and it works fine, but I think this powder really excels as a setting powder. It gives a subtle blur to the skin. It mattifies the complexion. There is a little bit of luminosity as well. And I personally, compared to this and the compact, I prefer this one under my eyes versus the compact. It's just easier to get just the right amount of coverage with the loose powder. For application with this powder, I personally use a brush. I like to get just a light dusting. And the claims for both of these powders that your skin stays mattified and you know not oily or greasy looking all day long, for me, they have been true. Even when I've been outside for five, six hours in the heat and I've been sweating, once my sweat like dries, you know, my skin it might be a little bit more luminous, but it's not greasy looking at all. And I think that's really all you can ask for from this product. Now, my skin is pretty much normal. I get a little bit dry at certain times of the year, a little bit oily in the warmer months, but it's really nothing major. It's pretty much normal on the spectrum. I think people who have oilier skin, I'm not sure how well it would hold up, but I, so far I'm really enjoying both of these products. Let's take a look at the two powders so you can see. So this is shade one in Rosie and this is shade three, Rose Orient. And you can see that the Rose Orient is a lot more of that petal pink shade, more of like the shade that you would get in a soft highlight. Whereas the Compact has a much more natural, a little bit more of a beige undertone compared to this one. So this has more of that like beigey pink shade versus this one, which is a little bit more bright. It's kind of like if you're looking at paint and this one has an ivory base, whereas this one has a bright white base. All right, here are the two powders. So this one here is the loose powder and this is the pressed powder. Just put these here for you to see. You can see the difference. The loose one is definitely gonna be brighter, whiter, and I can see people with deeper skin tones, this color leaving a bit of a white cast. So you can see when you buff it out, you still have a little bit of that. And there's definitely a luminosity with that. Whereas the rosy shade is a lot more natural looking it blends in a bit better i have a clip to show you here comparing the loose powder and the pressed powder i will be putting on the loose powder on the right side of my face as setting powder under eye powder and finishing powder and the pressed i'll be doing the same on the left side of my face i currently have on the coke and dough foundation along with the westman atelier stick blushes and chouchette and pop it and I'm going to set my face for a comparison between the loose and the compact Phyto Puja powder from Sisley. I'm going to do the right side with the loose powder and the left side with the compact. And for both, I'm going to use a brush. I am going to use the Surratt face brush on both sides so you can kind of get an idea. All right, this is the loose powder in number three, Rose Orient. And you can see compared to the side with no powder that there is definitely some mattifying and a slight blurring effect. About the same amount of powder from the compact in number one, rosy. You can see that both powders give you more of that matte look. You can see that both powders mattify the skin about the same amount. And it's a pretty comparable level of blurring. We are going to do the same thing using the Sonia G mini cheek brush with under the eyes. I'm gonna move you in closer so you can see everything even closer. 
Okay, here is the loose powder side and the pressed powder side. Here's the cheek with the pressed powder. Cheek with the loose powder. You guys tell me your thoughts and I will be sharing mine at the end of the video. And I moved you in a bit closer because now I'm going to apply the loose powder again to the right side more as a finishing powder now that I've finished the rest of my makeup. And I will do the pressed on the left side. Typically, this is not how I would use these powders, using the same one for setting and finishing. All right, here is the loose powder. Here is the pressed powder. Loose, pressed. In summary, I really love this new pressed powder from Sisley. If you just watch the comparison clip, I personally feel like I get a little bit more blur and a smoother finish from the pressed powder than I do with the loose powder. And I'd love to know what you think down below in the comments, so please let me know what your preference was. But I feel like the left side of my face just looks a little bit better, a little bit more blurred, and more of an airbrushed finish than the loose powder does. And that's not to say I don't like this one anymore. I still actually really like to use this for setting powder. It makes a great setting powder. After I apply any cream products, if I use a light dusting of this, it just makes this really nice smooth canvas to apply any powder products. And that's what I like this one for. That's basically what it's intended for. Whereas the compact, you can use it as setting or finishing powder. I think this would be a great you know, multi-purpose product to take when you're traveling. I have not tried using this on my skin without makeup, but you know, I, I can see it not being a nice product. I just don't know how much of a difference it would actually make on my skin. This product can be used for setting and finishing, and I do like it for both, but personally, I've been using it a lot more for finishing powder recently. And again, you can use this under the eyes, but it is not my preference for this powder. Under the eyes, I actually prefer the loose powder or the Pat McGrath under eye brightening powder, or whatever it's called in shade light. So those are the ones that I use most for the under eye or the Givenchy Prisma Libra powder. But this one, it's just a little bit harder to get that light coverage. Again, using the fluffy brush helps. And if I don't feel like taking out more products, I definitely will be using it for that. I feel like this powder does not really give any sort of powdery look to my skin. It really does kind of melt in. After you apply it, you let it sit, kind of warm up on your skin for a few minutes. And I feel like you get this really nice luminosity. It's just a little bit of a subtle glow, but it still has a matte finish. It's really, it's really nice. I really like the way that it applies to my skin and for me, this product is a winner. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any additional questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment box or DM me on Instagram. If you haven't already followed me on Instagram, I am at Alexis Jong and there's a link down below in the description box as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so already. We're getting close to a thousand and it's very exciting. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.